Hey everybody, Mr. Kaczynski here. Section double B, quadratic equations in IXL's Algebra 1. Uh, in my last video, I talked about this idea of creating a perfect square quadratic trinomial. And today we're going to use that idea of completing the square to solve quadratic equations. I've got four examples for you. They get a little bit more progressively difficult here as we go. All right. So here we've got a quadratic equation. We're going to solve it for completing the square. It's actually in the form that we want it to, all right, uh, want it to be. So this first step that I'm going to do is completing the square. I'm going to take this uh, expression here, and I'm going to turn it into a perfect square trinomial by adding 169 to it. All right, so where did that 169 come from? I took 26, the B value and I divided it by 2, and then I squared it. So 13 squared is 169. That's all we got to do, and that creates a perfect square. Um, whatever I do to one side, though, I also have to do to the other. So I'm going to add 169 over there on the right. Now the whole reason we did that is so that we could take this expression, this now perfect square trinomial, and write it as the square of a binomial. So essentially, factor it. That is equivalent to p plus 13 squared. So this expression and this expression are the exact same. Over there on the right, uh, we'll just simplify. Negative 27 plus 169 is 142. Now we can take the square root of both sides. The square root of this perfect square is p plus 13. And the square root of 142 is positive or negative square root of 142. It's irrational, so we'll just leave it like that for right now. And then we're just one step away from having our answer, which is to subtract 13 from both sides. So negative 13 plus or minus the square root of 142. And I'm having trouble here. There we go. And that's a perfectly acceptable answer. Uh, IXL does ask for um, rounded answers to the nearest 100th, so I've already kind of punched this into my calculator. Negative 13 plus the square root of four, 142 is negative 1.08. It's approximately negative 1.08. Uh, and negative 13 minus the square root of 142 is negative 24.92. So those would be the numbers that you actually put into IXL. These are approximate values, whereas the... Uh, this answer right here is the exact answer, which might be something that your professor or uh, teacher would prefer on a paper. All right, let's do this again. This one's a little bit different because the first thing we have to do is actually get rid of that 49 and put it over there on the other side. So, um, so I'm going to subtract 49 from both sides. Now I've got this expression on the left that I'm going to complete the square with. So... I'm going to take half of 20, which is 10, and square it. That's 100, and I'm going to add that 100 to both sides. All right, the reason we created that perfect square trinomial on the left is so that we can write it as the square of a binomial, j minus 10 squared. That is the same thing, but in factored form. On the right, we can simplify. Negative 49 plus 100 is 51. Then we'll take the square root of both sides. So we'll have j minus 10 equals plus or minus the square root of 51. And then we'll add 10 to both sides, and we basically have our answer. 10 plus or minus the square root of 51. Um, now again, we can make this into approximate answers. 10 plus the square root of 51 is 17.14. And 10 minus the square root of 51 is 2.86. Those are rounded to the nearest hundredth. And that's what IXL asks for, is decimals rounded to the nearest hundredth. All right, uh, I got another one here. And this one's different because the lead coefficient isn't 1. And completing the square only works when the lead coefficient is 1. But I can fix that. Uh, because I can just divide everything by negative 2. So uh, negative 2p squared divided by negative 2 is p squared. 24p divided by negative 2 is negative 12p. And negative 38 divided by negative 2 is positive 19. 
and 0 divided by negative 2 is still 0. So these two equations have the exact same solution. So um, that's the first step when the lead coefficient is not 1. Next, I'm going to subtract 19 from both sides. And then I'm going to complete the square on the left side. So I'm going to take half of 12, which is 6, and square it. That's 36. And I'm going to add 36 to both sides. Then I've got a perfect square trinomial on the left that I'm going to factor and turn into the square of a binomial. It's just p minus 6 squared. On the right, I'm going to simplify. Um, you know what? This is supposed to be negative 19, isn't it? Oops. Good thing I caught that. Uh, negative 19 plus 36 is 17. Then we'll take the square root of both sides, and we'll get p minus 6 equals plus or minus the square root of 17. And then we'll add 6 to both sides. The process gets very repetitive after you complete the square. And then we'll round a couple answers here. 6 plus the square root of 17 is 10.12. And 6 minus the square root of 17 is 1.88. So those are the two approximate solutions. These, 6 plus or minus the square root of 17, are the exact answers. i got one more, and this one's kind of crazy. Hopefully you're still with me. Uh, this one's pretty tough. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that negative 4. So I'm going to divide everything by negative 4. Uh, negative 4 f squared divided by negative 4 is just f squared. Negative 28 f divided by negative 4 is positive 7 f. And 16 divided by negative 4 is negative 4. All right, now we're going to complete the square. And because that middle term is an odd number, that makes things a little bit tougher. We're going to take half of 7, which is 7 halves, and then square it. That's 49 fourths. So again, we're taking 7 divided by 2 and squaring it. That's 49 fourths. It's a fraction, sorry. And it is easier to stick with the fractions, trust me. All right, so negative 4 plus the 49 fourths. And actually, I'm going to get a common denominator here, so I'm going to turn negative 4 into negative 16 fourths um, so that when I add the 49 fourths to it, I'll have the same denominator. Okay, on the left, I've got this perfect squared trinomial that can be factored as f plus 7 half squared. It's the square of a binomial. On the right, I'll combine these uh, two fractions and get 33 fourths. Then I'll take the square root of both sides. I get 7 plus, or I'm sorry, f plus 7 halves equals plus or minus the square root of 33. And then on the bottom, we do the square root of 4, which is just 2. And then my last step is to subtract 7 halves from both sides. And I get negative 7 halves plus or minus the square root of 33 over 2. And that actually is the exact answer. IXL wants an approximate answer. So I'm going to give you those answers when you're practicing to punch this into your scientific or uh, graphing calculator. Make sure you get these numbers or else you're punching it in wrong. Negative 7 halves plus the square root of 33 over 2 is negative 0 0.63. And negative 7 halves minus the square root of 33 over 2 is negative 6.37. All right, so we've done four examples of completing the square. This last one was kind of a beast. Um, because we had that odd b value there, that 7, that creates fractions. Um, when we take half of it and square it, it makes things a little bit more difficult. So, um, good luck to you. Let me know how it goes in the comments when you're solving quadratic equations by completing the square in IXL.